Now you realize you got to give up a few things, you know? Like hopes and dreams. <laughs> you know? I'm glad I could be I love this whole city. It's my first time here. You guys have been fantastic. The people are wonderful. Everything's beautiful. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for coming out tonight. Hey. This is a very big year for me, folks. I turned 60 years old this year. Yeah. Yeah. I probably should have had a piece of fruit back in 83. <laughs> I got up this morning, I looked in the mirror and went, eh, whatever, you know? <laughs> I've peaked, you know? It's not getting any better, you know what I mean? When you're turning 60, you know, you realize you gotta give up a few things, you know? Like hopes and dreams. <laughs> you know? I've been having this pain in my shoulder lasting six weeks. My doctor says to me, you know, Tone, as you get older, your body just doesn't bounce back quickly from an injury. I'm like, Doc, I was combing what's left of my hair. <laughs> it's tough getting older, I'm telling you folks. AARP has been sending me a bunch of stuff, right? <laughs> You look like you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> they send me stuff in the mail all the time. The other day I got a letter in the mail saying, if I renewed my membership, they would send me a special gift. Yeah. Did you get that letter? Yeah. A fanny pack. A fanny pack. Because nothing says 60's the new 40 like a fanny pack. What's next? White socks, sandals, Bermuda shorts, and a straw hat? You know what I mean? <laughs> the AARP. I think the AARP is kind of like the senior citizen mafia. Yeah. You, you would, they, if they came out with a movie, it'd be called The Grandfather, you know? <laughs> and that pivotal scene would have a line, leave your teeth, take the cannoli, you know? <laughs> I heard the AARP is coming out with a dating app for seniors. Yeah, it's called Plenty of Fish with Health Insurance. Yeah. A lot of crazy stuff in the news. You guys, I'm Italian, you guys probably couldn't figure that out, but the Pope's been in the news. Right this week, he was in the news yesterday. He's big in the Italian community. I don't know if you know that. Maybe not that much here, but where I come from, he's big, huge. You. We're really into the Pope. And I like this guy. I like this Pope. But they lied to us about him, right? When he first got elected, when that white smoke went up, they said, oh, we finally got an Italian Pope again. He's not Italian. He's not. He's from Argentina. Did you know that? That's not Italian. I want an Italian Pope. I want a Pope that's going to come out onto that balcony in front of a million people and go, Hey. <laughs> How you doing, you know? Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Forget about it, you know? <laughs> I want a Pope from New Jersey, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm married. Been married 38 years. Yeah. Yes. In a row. Uh, I'm lucky, man. I'm a very lucky. I married my childhood sweetheart. So my, we went to high school together, got married. We did it the old-fashioned way, you know. We didn't live together, nothing like that. We didn't, you know, because we're Italian. You don't, you don't do that. You know what I mean? That would be bad. You don't do any of that kind of stuff, right? And I didn't really want to live with her before I got married. Who was gonna cook for me, you know? I didn't want to leave home. <laughs> but we did it old school. We did it, we did it the Italian traditional way. I went to her father and I asked for permission to marry his daughter. And then I went to my mother and asked for permission to leave the house, you know? <laughs> 
So we got married, and I got to tell you, we learned about each other along the way, you know? That's how we learned. We, we didn't know anything about it. We learned along the way, folks. The first five years of my marriage, my face looked like this. <laughs> But you learn stuff, you do. Like I learned to never ask my wife a question, right? Because I was gonna have to do something called listen. And the answer would take a really long time. And I'd be expected to remember it. It's interesting, global warming is a big deal right now, right? You guys know about global warming, right? That's what the polar ice caps melted, right? And they say it's because industrial pollution is causing our polar ice caps to melt. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried all the female baby boomers are gonna have one collective hot flash. Whoosh, the whole planet's gonna come. Right? Some of you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about menopause. Yeah. That's a Latin word. It means, men, you might want to pause before you do anything that's going to tick this woman off. And let me tell you something, folks. After 38 years of marriage, I know what'll tick a woman off. Just can't stop doing it. You know? It's called breathing, you know? Uh, my wife's going through this menopause thing right now. I'm telling you, it's something else, you know? I accidentally took one of her menopause pills the other day. Yeah. I had this terrible urge to yell at myself all day long and then go shop for shoes, you know? You're frightening me right now. I feel like I'm speaking to the choir here a little bit. I can always tell when my wife forgets to take one of her pills, because, you know, yeah, because the air conditioning is set on North Pole, you know? No, to get warm, I have to sleep in the refrigerator. You know? It's a big fridge, it's a very big fridge, you know? Uh, I love my wife. I, I, I'm glad, I'm just, I like being married. I, like, I, don't, I just can't imagine not being married. We've been together, we're best friends, you know? We communicate, we talk to each other all the time about everything. I ask her stuff, she asks me stuff. Like the other day she said, honey, can you describe inflation to me? And I said, oh, sweetie, that's easy. When we first got married, I weighed 180 pounds. <laughs> now I weigh 280 pounds. You get a lot more husband. I just don't do as much. <laughs> oh, we spent our uh, 38th wedding anniversary in Maui. Yeah, anybody going to Maui? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know those travel brochures? The ones with them cute Ken and Barbies with those coconut bikini things going on, you know? They lie. Yeah. Everybody there looked like me. Yeah. Who knew that paradise was full of fat wops from New Jersey, you know? And when I'm on vacation, you know, I wanna do what I wanna do. I wanna do what I'm good at. Nothing, you know? My wife wants to do stuff. Let's go on a helicopter ride and tour the volcano. Has anybody done this? But the first thing they do is they show you a safety video, right? So you can learn how to unlock the helicopter door. <laughs> Which is good to know when you're over a volcano. <laughs> then they ask you this list of questions, right? The last question is, how much do you weigh? I told the guy, I told him, I have no problem. But then my wife lies by 20 pounds. I'm like, this is the moment you wanna do this? We're gonna, you're lying about your weight now? And I didn't say it out loud, it was the eyes. I was, I was like, really? And she's looking back at me with the evil eye going, don't you dare tell him, don't you dare tell him how much I weigh. 
And then it dawned on me, there were four other women on this flight with us. <laughs> what if they're all lying about their weight? There was one woman, she had to weigh 210, 220. I know she's coming in low, you know? So I'm like, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I want to change my answer. I weigh 500 pounds. Because I don't want to get sacrificed to Pele the volcano god. Because these women don't want Captain Bob to think we're fat. That was day one. You know what we did on day two? The bike ride. It wasn't enough that we could see the volcano from the air. We had to go up there and be dropped off with a bicycle at sunrise, right? I don't do bicycle, right? I'm not balancing this on a bike. So we're up there at 4.30 in the morning. They drop us off with a thousand other people and bicycles, right? We get to watch the sun come up. Woohoo! <laughs> then we have to bike back down from the volcano. Yeah, yeah, 37 miles. My wife's like, oh, it's okay, honey, it's downhill. It's 37 miles. Now, let me tell you something, folks. A 280-pound man doesn't go down from the volcano at the same speed as a 120-pound woman. I got there four hours before she did. That was day two. You know what we did on day three? Look at me. Really look at me. Is there anything about me that says snorkeler? <laughs> if you've never been to Hawaii, let me give you a little bit of advice. Never ask for directions, right? Oh, first you go down the Halikali Malifali Funiculi Funicula Street. Then turn right on Malahini Fukuhumi. Like, hey, sport, this is America. Name your streets after something Spanish. I shouldn't pick on my wife and all the stuff we do, but she's not here, so I don't care. My wife and I, we celebrated our rights of marriage on June 10th, 1978. Yeah, they call it the rights of marriage because right after the ceremony, I had the right to remain silent. <laughs> because you women don't forget anything. You don't, do you ladies? No, they're all shaking their heads. The, the men are like, oh, mm, mm, mm. yeah, you know. You don't forget anything. Like the other day we're in Walmart, right? Because you know, I got that kind of cash, you know? <laughs> My wife hauls off and slaps me. I'm like, what was that for? You were looking at that girl. What girl? The one at the zoo. We haven't been to the zoo in 12 years. And my wife basically lives to make me feel like an idiot. Oh, and I try and help her out as often as I can. <laughs> Honey, I can't find my keys. Oh. <laughs> well, did you look for them? <laughs> no. <laughs> Hadn't thought of that. Looking for my keys. You get the best ideas, honey. 
Then she went right to my keys. Why? Because you women hide stuff from us. <laughs> you don't call it hiding. You put stuff. There's not a guy in this room that knows where the magic land of away is. It's some place between Bed Bath and Beyond and Ikea. That much I know. I put my keys on the kitchen counter. Now they've gone away. And guys, you know, if you're with a woman, if you're married, whatever, you're dating somebody, within three minutes, your stuff's gonna start to disappear, right? And weird stuff of theirs just starts showing up, right? The other day, I found a little ping pong paddle in my shower. <laughs> my shower's not that big, you know? It's like, what kind of game is she playing in here? <laughs> Do you still gotta win by two? I don't know. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, well, maybe it's part of one of those weird diets she's on, you know? The eat a cheeseburger, take a shower, smack your butt with a paddle diet. I, I don't know. I come out of the bathroom with this thing. I'm like, honey, what's this? She goes, you moron. That's a foot file. <laughs> a foot file. Guys, that's how they get their feet in the pointy shoes. They're filing their feet. <laughs> I don't understand you women. I really don't. How come Rosetta Stone hasn't come up to translate something like that? That's what I want to know. I will say this though, and I, I believe this in my heart. I believe that the women should be running this country. I think women should be in charge, I really do. I, I think it's about time, yeah. Because, think about this, if a woman was running the country, there'd be no war. We just wouldn't talk to other countries for a while. <laughs> and she'd balance the budget, because we'd buy all of our weapons on sale. I have a coupon. And a woman would have found Bin Laden in about 30 minutes. She would. Well, General, did you look for him? I'm fat. I know you can't tell because I'm wearing black. <laughs> Been fat a long time. My doctor's always on my case about it. He's, Tony, why do you think you're fat? Oh, I don't know, Doc. Maybe because the Girl Scout Cookie Mafia followed me around the entire month of February. <laughs> why do you think you're fat? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> he says, Tony, you got to go to the gym, work out, go to the gym. I thought about going to the gym. That's two minutes of my life I'll never get back. <laughs> you never see people look like me at a gym. You never see fat people at a gym. What do they do with us after they sign us up, you know? <laughs> I think there's a secret door that all the fat people go into and it leads to hometown buffet. <laughs> That's my dream anyway. My wife tricked me into going to a gym once. Who knew that Pilates wasn't an Italian restaurant, you know? <laughs> I hate people that like to brag about how they act. They're always like, oh, uh, they're so enthusiastic. Like, you know, I got up this morning, I did a 90 minute workout, and then I ran a 5K and swam a 2K. I feel fantastic. Really? I had six slices of pizza, then I took a nap. You don't hear me bragging about it. <laughs> <sighs> oh, you know? I'm fat, I'm fat. I'm fairly certain when I die, if I see a bright white light, it's because I had a heart attack in front of my fridge, you know? <laughs> I've tried, I've tried exercise. I bought, I, I, I've bought a lot of that equipment off late night TV, you know? That exercise stuff. Yeah, I bought an ab roller. It's not high enough to hang laundry from. <laughs> I bought a Bowflex, right? 
You guys seen these things with all the wires and everything like that? Here's all I have to say about we had a Bowflex, and that's we also used to have a cat. (laughs) (laughs) Just saying, I don't want the PETA people upset with me over that one. And I know that it's important. I know dieting is important, and that's a big part of being healthy and everything, I think, you know. But to me, it's very difficult just to diet. Like, I'm kind of a fat psychic, you know. Like, I know days in advance when a cheesecake's going to die, you know. (laughs) Diet's a challenge for me, you know. So, but they they tell you that you got to diet. You got to change your lifestyle stuff, Tom. And I think that dieting is kind of like the speed limit. Right? It's, it's like speed limit for food. It's meant to be broken. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> We've all been there before, you know? Yeah. I think that uh, the challenging thing is that when you're fat, you're an oppressed person. Did you know that? We fat people are an oppressed people. We are. You may have seen me and some of my fat friends at an all-you-can-eat buffet singing those old fat spirituals, you know? <laughs> like amazing gravy, you know? <laughs> Or, dinner time, and the bacon is sizzling, fish is frying, mashed potatoes piled high, oh, that cheesecake's rich, and that pizza good looking, don't worry baby, there's plenty for us to try. I think my favorite fat spiritual is sweet and low, it tastes like crap. (laughs) Krispy Kreme, carry me home. Sweet and low causes cancer in rats. Krispy Kreme, carry me home. I looked inside a gym and what did I see? Krispy Kreme, carry me home. A bunch of people that didn't look like me. Krispy Kreme, carry me home. Sweet and low, it tastes like crap. Join in. You can talk, everybody say, Krispy Kreme, it tastes like, sweet and low, it tastes like crap. Krispy Kreme, carry me home. Sweet and low, causes cancer in rats. Krispy Kreme, carry me home. You guys are awesome. Well, I wish I would have knew that earlier. We could have been singing all sorts of songs up here. I think in order to really make it up to the fat people like us, I think we need to have a fat pride day. Yeah. There'll be no parade. I mean, it's not at no, there's no parade screwing up traffic. It's not like fat people are gonna march, you know? And matter of fact, you wouldn't even know it was Fat Pride Day, you know? We'd just all be home eating pizza, watching the Food Network, you know? <laughs> uh, my uh, wife hired a personal trainer for me. That poor guy. A little young kid, you know, he's like, Mr. Calabrese, you know, what we're gonna do, what we're gonna do here, first thing we gotta do is we gotta establish your fitness goals for the year. We're gonna set them out, just lay out that fitness goal. So by the end of this year, I'm gonna have an ab. (laughs) He says to me, Tone, we gotta strengthen your core. I said, well, what if at my core, I'm just a fat guy, you know? (laughs) He says, no, if you work out, eventually your muscles will remember what it's like to be 18. Really? (laughs) They're gonna remember I was eating ding-dongs behind the gym during gym (laughs) class? Young guys, young kids today. I worry about young kids today. Don't you worry about young people? I do. We're raising a nation of whiners and crybabies right now. We are. I can prove it. Do you know what the number one video game is in this country? It's Grand Theft Auto. Did you know that? Our teenagers are too lazy to go out and steal an actual car. (laughs) 
What is happening to America? You can't punish kids today. No, you'll ruin their self-esteem. We didn't have self-esteem when I was a kid. We had humiliation, right? And we were thankful for it. You can't spank them. Ah, whatever. Don't spank Timmy. Timmy's got ADD. Well, yeah, maybe Timmy's just a BRAT. Maybe what we need to do is spank Timmy's B U T T. Because let me tell you something, folks. I went to Catholic school, right? Big shock. I went to Catholic school. I was raised by Irish nuns. Yeah. Oh, I had ADD. Once. It's the technology, it's the stupid technology that's ruining our children. They don't talk to each other anymore, do they? They text each other all the, LOL, you're my BFF. They don't even know who they're talking to. How do you know your BFF is just some big fat, forget about it, you know? I don't text, look at the size of these things. I can't text. I try to text my wife, FYI, call your mom. It came out, FYI, call me Tom. What? <laughs> Try explaining that to your wife. Yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay, because now they got something called talk to text. You guys know about this? Yeah. Just yeah. my phone, okay? And next to the keyboard thingy, there's a little microphone. See? And so if I want to send a text message, I can press the microphone, and then I can talk into a phone. <laughs> to send a text message. And apparently, the little Indian man in here I don't know where it goes. <laughs> Apparently he had bigger hands than me. Because what I said was, why don't we go to Denny's for dinner? It's not that far. What came out was, let's take the dingo to Knott's Berry Farm. a dingo. Oh, I sent the message, you know, and she texts me back. I think he'd prefer Disneyland. <laughs> this crazy stuff, this crazy technology, it's gotten into everything, right? The other day I'm in the grocery store. Tell me if you've had this happen to you, right? You go up to the checker, right? You go to checkout and the checker says to you, would you like to make a donation today? Have yeah, you had this happen, right? Every, it's like every time I go to the grocery store, they're hitting me up for money, right? And I, and I, this, well, I just, I, was, I, I wasn't mean about it, but I said, no, no thank you. And she looked right at me and said, oh, unhappy face. Now, wait a minute. She didn't make an unhappy face with her actual face. She said unhappy face. She talked in an emoji. Is that what the world's coming to? We're talking in this stuff now? Could you imagine yourself at work? Um, boss, I lost the Johnson account today, unhappy face. Well, you're fired, surprise look. I have three beautiful grandkids. They're the love of my life and the light of my life. But the 14 year olds, his bulb's going a little dim. I'm just, you know, I'm... No, the other day he's in the bathroom and he yells out, oh crap, I've had my underwear on backwards all day. 
That explains everything. <laughs> I have an eight-year-old granddaughter. She is, she's the spoiled one. Every, we only have one girl in the family, and she's it. And she is spoiled rotten, but she's adorable. She says to me the other day, I hate men. <laughs> You're eight. <laughs> I'm practicing. She says to me, you know, Papa, I know what true love is. True love is, is when you keep your boyfriend, even if he's really annoying, until you get the time to find another one. <laughs> I have a four-year-old grandson, he's a kick. He's like, Papa, Papa, do you ever think that when you're mad, you're kind of like the fat and the furious? <laughs> I gotta get out of here, I wanna tell you a brief story. You guys may not know this, but for 35 years, I was a banker, right? Not a baker, I look like a baker, I was a banker, okay? Yeah, and I went through seven mergers, the last one they, ex they offered me an exciting new position, right? And a 60% pay cut, yeah. Sometimes you gotta just take the severance package, slash their tires and move on, you know? <laughs> But I don't know if you guys have been over 50 looking for a job, but the, the questions that people ask you are so stupid. Like, I go in for an interview, it's like, oh, what are your greatest weaknesses? Veal Parmesan, you know? <laughs> Where do you see yourself in five years? Living with my kids if I don't get this job. <laughs> Describe yourself in three words. Unemployed. <laughs> and you would think that people would ask me financial advice, the fact that I was a banker. I was the president of a bank, they would, but they don't. The only thing anybody ever wants to know is, have you ever been robbed? Isn't that the stupidest question? Yeah, I've been, in, I've been married for 38 years. Of course I've been robbed. <laughs> But I've been, mar I, I've, been, I've been married, I've been robbed 31 times. Yep, 31 bank robberies, right? The first bank robbery, I was young, right? I was 18, it was actually Good Friday, and all the bank tellers were dressed up in their Easter outfits, it was really cute. I was dressed as a rabbit. <laughs> a six foot tall rabbit with ears that went up about 10 feet, right? That was you know, something you did back then, right? And a guy comes up to the teller next to me, and all I hear is, put the money in the bag. And I'm like, that sounds like my wife. <laughs> but he had a mustache. Oh, I'm still, you know, what are you going to do? Could still be my wife. You know? <laughs> it's okay. We love each other. Yeah. Well, one thing they do, if you've ever worked in the bank, they tell you, don't run after a bank robber. Just give him the money, let him go. Not me. I'm going to be a hero. I ran after him dressed as a rabbit. <laughs> I had the floppy feet coming out to here. I'm running down the street like this. One of my feet fell off, right? A homeless guy picked it up. He's rubbing it going, here comes Peter Cottontail. It was a weird experience. <laughs> the guy pointed the gun at me, but he didn't shoot because you wouldn't shoot the Easter Bunny, right? And he got away, he got away. What's really weird is 30 years later, right? I'm working in another office, I'm the manager of the bank, you know, and I had one of these tellers, her name was Margo, she was 65 years old, she was a veteran, right? Guy comes up, robs her, and she, he's got a gun. She reaches out and grabs the gun out of his hand. She says, you need to go back to school. What would your parents think about this? <laughs> and she's waving the gun around. He walks outside, sits down on the, curb and starts weeping. Yeah. The police showed up. We found out that as a child, he'd been traumatized. He had seen a rabbit chasing a bank robber. Good night, everybody. Local man robs Wendy's with alligator. We're the alligator boys now. And the lady that they sent them to the bank should be going, Mom. Mom.